Welcome to Alpha Signal, where we cover the latest and greatest in AI. And today we are going to walk through the multimodal chat GPT. What is it and how does it work? In order to answer this question, we are going to break this video down into three passes. Each pass will go into increasing levels of detail. So let's get started with pass one on what is multimodal chat GPT. ChatGPT is a chatbot and GPT is its engine. In its first release to the public in 2022, ChatGPT was built on GPT 3.5. And this system is capable of text input and text output. This is the original free version of ChatGPT where you can ask an input text question and get an output text response. But now with GPT 4's release in 2023, ChatGPT can handle image plus text as input and then produce text as output. And more recently, it could handle voice input and produce a voice output. Each of these media types are known as modalities, and hence ChatGPT with GPT-4 is a multimodal model because it can process multiple modalities. Well, let's take a look at these individually, starting with the image plus text input and the text output. With GPT-4, you can take a picture of like the bike here and add some context and ChatGPT will use this text and image together when generating the response. You can even annotate the image with circles and use this with your text so that it provides some context when you're asking something to ChatGPT. When GPT-4 was released in March of 2023, it was released to an app called Be My Eyes to assist the visually impaired and this was used as a testbed. Fast forward a few months later to September 2023, OpenAI will launch this feature in the original ChatGPT app. Now let's talk about the voice input and voice output ChatGPT. The best way to understand this is with a demo again. We want to hear a bedtime story. Tell us a story about the super duper sunflower hedgehog named Larry. Start with telling us a little bit about him. Larry was a unique hedgehog unlike any other. He had bright sunflower petals instead of spines. Residing in Meadowville, Larry spread joy and color wherever he rolled. People cherished his radiant presence. What was his house like? Larry's house was a cozy burrow beneath a sunflower field. Inside, the walls shimmered with golden petal patterns. Natural light streamed through tiny sunflower windows, creating a warm, glowing ambience. It was a sun-kissed haven. Now, ChatGPT with GPT-4 can learn what you say with just a few seconds of speech and have a conversation with you in your own voice. On the surface, it just looks like a fun feature, but Spotify is using this technology to translate a podcast from one language to any other. When you say the word toxicity, how are you defining that? You're saying like toxic chemicals. Chemicals que introducimos en nuestras vidas, en nuestra piel, consumimos, inhalamos, tenemos a nuestro alrededor y que están en nuestros alimentos, etc. How do you think? O sea, a modo de consejo, ya que lo estamos platicando, a diario, ¿qué opinas sobre los problemas difíciles del mundo? While this new technology is amazing, care needs to be taken to make sure that ChatGPT is safe to use. And so GPT-4 has a refusal system where it refuses to answer a prompt if it is not deemed safe. And this technology has made ChatGPT relatively safer, but it needs to be improved. For example, what this is saying is that the original GPT-4 would answer quite a few questions if related to identifying a person in an image, whereas GPT-4 with the refusal system will not entertain or answer those questions. GPT-4 will also refuse to answer image jailbreak questions. That is when a user provides some very convoluted logic in terms of text and images, and they might be some malicious prompts that are embedded in between, it, but it can be logically hard to understand. Now, with the refusal system, you can see that it does catch those cases and it refuses to answer those questions. Now, that's gonna do it for pass one. So let's move on to pass two, where we get into some of the more technical details of ChatGPT and GPT-4. So I'm in this technical report for GPT-4, and it looks like GPT-4 is a transformer style model that is pre-trained to predict the next token in a document using publicly available data, such as internet data, and data licensed from third-party providers. The model was then fine-tuned using reinforcement learning from human feedback, that is RLHF. Let's break this definition down, starting with GPT-4 is a transformer style model. 
So transformer neural networks were introduced in this paper called Attention is All You Need back in 2017 in order to address machine translation that is translating from one language to another but over time became adopted in just general sequence to sequence modeling. Sequence in, is like a sentence in this case. The crux of the transformer architecture consists of an attention mechanism. And we have two parts, that is an encoder and the decoder part. So let's say that we were performing some English to French translation. We would pass in the English sentence words simultaneously in order to get the word vectors simultaneously. We would take these vectors then and put it into the decoder to generate the French translation one word at a time. Now the encoder and the decoder here can actually be used separately. The stacking the encoders together, we get a bi-directional encoder representation from transformers, that is BERT, and all of that line of research. And if we stack the decoders together, we get generative pre-trained transformers, that is the GPT architecture. So GPT is a decoder only transformer architecture. And this is the basis for GPT-4. Now coming back to our definition here. So GPT-4 is a transformer style model that is pre-trained to predict the next token in the document. The natural language processing problem of given a previous set of words, try to predict the next words, that is known as language modeling. And the model that does this is a language model. So GPT-4 is pre-trained in order to be a language model. And it does so by using publicly available data. The model was then fine-tuned using reinforcement learning from human feedback. So why is this the case? Because GPT-4 is currently a language model. It knows how to produce one word after the other. However, we want these words to be safe and factual and non-toxic. This here is a schematic of the ChatGPT page for OpenAI. And we can kind of see that where does reinforcement learning fall? It falls in this step two category where we're building some rewards model. The pre-trained version of ChatGPT, it can produce multiple responses to the same question, but we have a human that ranks these responses based on how safe they are, how factual they are, how non-toxic they are. And then we would train this rewards model that understands, okay, we're going to assign a high reward if the answers produced by this model is high, otherwise a low reward if it's not as factual or somewhat toxic. And this is this model, this rewards model is then used to fine tune the original model in order to make sure that the original model becomes less toxic and more factual. That's going to do it for pass two. And we'll now go through pass three. How is ChatGPT becoming multimodal. At this time, we really don't know, but we can theorize by just looking at some similar research. So here's a paper on vision transformers. And the architecture is pretty neat here because it uses a purely transformer neural network architecture to take an image and then encode it. So we have this transformer encoder over here, and this is essentially the same transformer encoder that we discussed previously in the Attention is All You Need paper. Now this transformer encoder is a sequence to sequence model. So an image here is not typically a sequence, but we can actually just break this image up into multiple patches and just pass it in as though it were a sequence. So this is like a feed forward layer where we'll have like each of these pink spots are just image patch embeddings where each of these images is like a 16 cross 16 patch. We would then add all of these to a positional encoding, which is another vector, and then pass it into the transformer encoder. And like we mentioned before, if we pass in multiple words simultaneously, we get multiple words simultaneously. This is exactly what happens in the vision transformer too. We pass in these nine image patches along with like a learnable embedding for determining the class. And we will get 10 vectors out on top here. The nine vectors over here are going to be encoded representations of the image. Whereas the 10th vector here is just going to be another vector that represents some class. In this case, we're training a classification model to classify this image as probably a building. And that's how we pre-train this vision transformer. We can train it on a classification task so that it just becomes better at creating representations of vector representations of these images as well. GPT can also handle audio, which is also very similar. In fact, it's probably more straightforward than processing images because audio itself is already a sequence data. So we can chunk up audio and also encode said audio. 
Now, how do we process image and text and audio together? So the idea is to ensure that these image, text, and audio can share an embedding space. And so closer images that are closer to words together, like how this picture of a dog is closer to the word dog and the picture of a cat is closer to the word cat. And because they are closer, that means their meaning should also be closer. And this is the kind of embedding space that we want our ultimate transformer network to learn. But once again, we don't know the details of specifically multimodal chat GPT, but we can always theorize by looking at very similar research. For example, Palm E or Palm Embodied. So this is an embodied multimodal language model that was introduced by Google. Palm here is a language model. So it will take a sequence and produce subsequent values of that sequence. In this case, it can take either an image or text or it could take, and this is going to be a ro very specific to Palm E because it's a robot scene and it's used for that purpose. But essentially what we do is we take an image, we pass it through a vision transformer. And then because of that, the image is now broken up into patches and each of those patches is encoded into an embedding. Each word is also encoded into an embedding, which is of the same dimension so that they can be compared to each other. They are then passed into this large language model, which will then produce one token at a time autoregressively. So once we pass this as input, the output is going to be, well, the answer. Then we'll pass this in as the input, then it generates first, and that's passed as the input to generate the next word, which is passed as the input to generate the next word, and so on. And until we get the final answer to the original question and image that was passed as input. Further down in this paper, you can kind of see here that Palm E is a decoder only LLM that generates text completions autoregressively when given a prefix or a prompt. So decoder only because it is a transformer decoder-esque architecture and autoregressive means that it uses its output as an input for the next time step. And in Palm, the inputs consist of text and multiple continuous observations, including like images, where we have word, 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 followed by image, word image. ChatGPT though is probably a little more simplified version of this because we just have an image and we have a sentence and then we are trying to generate the output text to answer a question. So you can see that there are similarities between ChatGPT4 and Palm E. And so hopefully by looking at Palm E, we can get an idea of how GPT4 works with multimodalities. Now concepts like this are really cool and need to understand and to, in order to keep up to date with everything that's going on in this burgeoning AI world, I highly recommend you check out our newsletter on Alpha Signal. Every week we'll provide summaries on what's going on in this world and also our thoughts. So it's a wonderful way to just keep up and keep in the know of everything that's going on today. But, but that's gonna be everything that I have for you right now. Thank you all so much for tuning into Alpha Signal and we'll see you in another one. Bye-bye.